Well, it's Brandon with Voodoo Forge. Uh, there has been a lot of interest in the Voodoo Scale armor I made, and I've had a lot of orders for it. So, in all of that, I have improved it and changed the way I make it a little to make it a little easier than making. That set that I made that I sent down to Matt at Demolition Ranch because I was figuring it all, all out as I went and uh, filming every step and everything actually took about 35 hours. You know, if, if so I've, I've cut a little bit, I've cut a lot of that time off with uh, some of the things I've changed in here. So let me just show you some of the ways I've changed the armor and some of the ways I've changed making it. Now, if you remember when I made that first set, I was taking the rounds that I cut off of the tank and slicing them with an, an angle grinder into rough size. And then I would hammer them flat a little bit and I ended up taking some angle iron and clamps to try and press them a little flatter. I don't do it that way anymore. Instead of cutting each individual plate off of the rounds that I cut off of the cylinders now, I cut each round into a couple of sections, get as much of it in the forge as I can, and then I flatten it all out on the press at once. That ought to be warm enough. smoothly every time the camera's up. Turn the camera around, everything goes to hell. The first set that you saw me make, because everything was weird sizes, because I was cutting off around and and didn't have everything completely flat. So to get the pieces uniform, I kind of clamped them all together and ground them and, and uh, I don't do that anymore. So with these strips, nice and flat from the press, to get them to shape, all I have to do is throw them in the bandsaw. Now, in my opinion, this next thing has been the biggest improvement to the design of the armor itself, and that is threading the back plates instead of welding nuts on the back. I'm doing the layout on these the exact same as the, the first style, except instead of drilling a large hole through both the front and back plate and welding a nut on the back, I'm drilling a slightly larger than quarter inch hole on the front and then threading the back plates. This should eliminate where when Matt tested the armor and it, it blew the bolt out the back, if a bolt gets cut, it'll still be threaded in the back so a piece of it won't come out the back. So that doesn't make it easier to make, but it makes it better quality, I feel like. We'll say that I feel like I'm getting better at threading holes for a while this was a massive chore but now it's going relatively 
smoothly. Mostly because I bought the right damn tools. Oh, cheap taps are ridiculous. Started. But you buy a good quality made tap and it'll last for several, several holes. And I've also discovered it's best not to tap 40 holes in a row. Tap a few holes. Do something else for a little while, because you don't want to get complacent with it. You get off just a little, you snap that tap in there, and it is a pain. Still using grade 8 bolts when we get ready for assembly. Just hand start it. Zip it in there. I don't go all the way down. I want to get everything lined up before I do. She just pops together really easy. Well, usually, there we go. Once I've got one layer put together, I can mark drill and thread my next layer. Once everything is together, I tighten the bolts up and this gives me a solid plate that I can then grind the edges and get everything uniform. Another advantage to having the back threaded is the end user, the customer, whoever gets this, if they want to, they can tighten those nuts all the way down. They can replace the nuts uh, without having to go to a, a shop. You know, you just Heat that red Loctite a little and you should be able to take those right out and put another one in. Um, but like I said, also being able to tighten it up and turn it into a rigid plate, if you want, I feel like that's a benefit. Tighten the edges ground, I go back and loosen every bolt a full turn. This gives us the flexibility that the original had. Now we've loosened all the bolts, the armor is flexible again. But we got bolts sticking out the back. So we gotta cut these off. Easiest way to do this is just to take a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder and slice them off. take some of the plates off to get to some of these so you kind of work your way around. Once they're cut off, I take a flat bit. Now that they're smoothed out, I can pull the bolts out and soak them in vinegar to remove the coating that's on them. Now the choke point on this entire process has been the quenching. With my one quench tank, which has worked fine for me for years, because you know when I quench something it's a tool I'm making or a, a knife or something like that. Well, when you got a whole bunch of things that you need to quench and you got to let it cool down between quenching, 
one quench tank isn't gonna do it so I figured I needed more than that and fortunately I just so happen to have a bunch of those aluminum cylinders sitting around
time I took these three pieces of material and put them in the forge to the time they were all quenched was less than 10 minutes. Now, I will have to wait about 40 minutes for this oil to cool off. I'm letting it cool off to um, below 80 degrees. Uh, the first tank we quenched in is 100 degrees, the second one is 104, and the last one here is also 104. Now before, with just one tank, it would take me about 45 minutes each piece, because I, I, I only have one tank to quench again, then I had to wait for that to cool off. So this has sped that up, and the, the kitty litter on the floor <laughs> hopefully will keep me alive longer. The difference this is done before heat treatment is I'm welding my little voodoo skull on all the way around since it flew off in Matt's test. And also, I have moved the, um, the belt brackets to the front instead of the side. I feel like it'll make it a little more comfortable. But once we, it's, it's all heat treated and put together. So now we gotta worry about it flying apart. So for final assembly, to keep the bolts from just flying out, using red Loctite, thread locker, whatever you want to call it. Right up here. Well, maybe I'll line it up. Here we go. Now, I've got my finger on the back so I can feel when that is flush with the back of the plate, and that's where I stop. Now, something else that I think is pretty cool is I've started leaving them oil black and not hitting it with a flap disc when I'm done, and this gives everything a, a black kind of non-glare matte finish which looks pretty tactical. cool well y'all that's how I have had to change how I do this so I could kind of you know make several of these because if I had to do it all the way I did the first time I'd go crazy but I am planning on making a larger set for me because I haven't made one for me and you know, why the hell not? So um, I'll, I'll keep y'all posted on that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you want to contact me, my email is in the description. Uh, if you leave me a comment, I might not see it. So email. But uh, all right, hope y'all got something out of this. Y'all behave yourselves.